Well, thank you, William, and uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm immediately feeling uh, bad about the fact that I'm not giving my address off my tablet. Uh, this is my favourite technology. For those of you who are young and unfamiliar with it, this is called paper. It is a uh, pleasure, firstly, to acknowledge uh, the Minister, the Honourable Stephen Joyce, Chancellor of the University, Dr Ian Parton, Dean of the Business School, Professor Greg Whitred, and all of our friends and colleagues who are with us tonight to celebrate the 10th anniversary of Spark. And what I'd like to do uh, tonight a little bit is set the scene for the role that the University of Auckland plays uh, in entrepreneurship and, and as part of that, of course, uh, the Spark Entrepreneurial Challenge. I think it's fair to say that the University of Auckland has a history which is pretty unique among New Zealand universities and still comparatively rare around the world in supporting entrepreneurial activities. And we can trace that history at least back to the late 1980s when the then Vice-Chancellor, Sir Colin Maiden, who not coincidentally had previously been an engineer in the US with General Motors, uh, established in this university Auckland Uni Services Limited, uh, one of the sponsors, as you've heard, of the Spark Entrepreneurial Challenge. And Auckland Uni Services, a subsidiary of the university, has grown since that time to be one of the largest two companies of its kind in Australasia, with annual revenues in excess of $130 million uh, and about 2,500 live contracts at any one time. Another milestone occurred in the early 2000s as New Zealand faced up to the fact that progressively since the 1950s we'd slipped from the third highest standard of living in the world to 24th in the OECD. And that trend prompted serious discussion by government, by business and by academics about how best to reverse the decline in performance and safeguard the country's future. The University of Auckland, then under the leadership of Dr John Hood, took a lead role in raising awareness of the serious issues facing the country by hosting, in partnership with the government, two high-profile conferences, catching the knowledge wave in 2001 and the Leadership to a Forum in 2003. And these conferences highlighted the need for a strong commitment to lifting the country's GDP and proposed that this could be done by transforming the nation into a high-value, knowledge-based economy. The universities have a particular role in that process, not only in supporting existing industries, but in creating fundamental breakthroughs that will allow New Zealand to develop new high-value low volume products and services. And here courage is required by both universities and governments because many of these breakthroughs are unpredictable and not subject to the kinds of milestones that tend to govern modern investment and research. Later this evening, of course, we're going to see the results of all this hard work when we hear from the 13 teams who battled it out to be this year's prize winners for Spark and I want at this point, before I move on, to congratulate all of the, you who've reached this point in the competition and to wish you the very best of luck. 